Welcome to the third episode of DoubleX Overflow. Let's get straight into it. Let's start off with some US Racer facts. Did you know that the PC version of US Racer and London Racer 2 don't keep their assets inside an IMG file? This means that you're able to explore the files and open a majority of the assets with NIFScope. I even made a really crappy proof of concept game with the US Racer assets many years ago, back when I was vaguely interested in game development. It wasn't good, but I also wrote zero code for it, so there we are. I want to make some renders using these assets when I have some free time, so watch out for that in a very, very distant future DoubleX Overflow episode. Here's a bonus fact. Did you know that with Quick BMS you can open any game by your DoubleX game? Any game that has an IMG file can be opened. This script, however, was made with World Challenge in mind, and I have found that it works best on that version of the DoubleX engine, as when trying to extract files from games like London Racer 2, everything comes out as mostly gibberish. Like I was with the script for Destruction Madness, it doesn't work well for Novadrom, despite it being the same stainless games engine. Did you know that in the PS1 booklet for US Racer, you get a detailed description of each character? This is not the case for the PS2 booklet. With London Racer 2, both versions of the game feature character description. I unfortunately do not own a version of Autobahn Rise of 4 or Paris Marseille Racing 2 physically, so I'm unable to check if the PS2 booklets also have character descriptions, and if the PS1 and PS2 versions both feature the character descriptions for Paris Marseille Racing 2. Speaking of the characters, can I point out how annoying it is that Lord Arthur Gilbert is from Yorkshire? Yorkshire is a county, not a city. Every other racer is from a city. In the PS2 version, at least he's from York, which is a city, but only in game, as in the FMV, he is still from Yorkshire. Did you also know that the PS2 manual for US Racer has the Windows title bar left in it? Bonus trivia fact is that London Racer Destruction Madness on the PS2 has an identical manual to the PC version, but they've cropped the screenshots. Speaking of manuals, did you know that the manual for Alarm for Cobra Volume 2 has the menu from the first volume? Both games are very similar, so it's no surprise that they forgot to change this detail in the manual. In a future video, I might do a comparison of both volumes and see if there's anything that has changed. Did you know that US Racer on PC runs at 60fps? As far as I'm aware, it is the only DoubleX game using the game by your engine that does so. It definitely feels smoother than the other games, that's for sure. Did you also know that both PC versions of Autobahn Razor 4 and London Racer 2 have a black screen where the PS2 autosave screen should be? Which I believe they could have removed in the game strings, so it's weird that they didn't do so. With how nice the US Racer build is on PC, it feels like Davlex got lazier with the future games, or maybe they thought that they could save time and money by putting the game almost like for like, removing PS2 specific things like adaptive PCM audio and the autosave screens. Last small fact, did you know that London Racer was originally called M25 Racer? This would have gone along with the A2 Racer's name, used in DoubleX's home country. You can even see remains of this in the setup screen. The box art of this game was very similar to that of A2 Racer and Audubon Racer 1 and 2. This version of the game was released as a big box. London Racer was also released as a big box, however it was also repackaged in a DVD box. M25 was different code-wise to London Racer, it wasn't just a repackage of the game, which means that the London Racer Windows XP patch breaks M25 Racer. I need to use that patch to get it working on Windows XP properly. As for the main fact of this episode, did you know that London Racer 2 was featured in a book about video games? Now, DoubleX Games has been featured in a recent academic book about Dutch video game history, but what I'm talking about here is a British book released by Collins in 2003. This is Collins Gamer, the graphic art of computer games. Andre Van Rugen, the art director at DoubleX Games, talks about how DoubleX did extensive photo shoots on location for textures and to capture the atmosphere of the city they're in. And this atmosphere is what I love about DoubleX Games personally. While the cities in game are not street to street accurate, the landmarks are all there and the atmosphere feels pretty close to that of the real cities. Andre also says that games are not art, instead they are made to entertain. This is a bit clickbaity, he just means that games are a mainstream mass medium while art isn't. He also talks about how the style of the game needs to stand out, but stick to the player's expectations. London Racer lets you break the law and drive fast, and the style of the game makes it feel real and gives you the thrill of doing something legal. This style is easy to understand and doesn't alienate the mainstream player. He also talks about the future of video games and how there will be such a massive polygon count that you can't tell the difference between real life and video games anymore. He also talks about the fact that indie studios will not be able to achieve these real worlds because they don't have the manpower to do so. Obviously, a lot has changed in these last 17 years, since many indie games destroy expectations of what a small team should be able to develop. 
The game also talks about the process of going to Universal to create the Knight Rider game. It also shows off different lighting effects in Paris Massier Racing 2. Also, the fact that the games aren't street to street accurate is brought up. Angolo Bod, lead artist at Dablex Games, says that gameplay comes before accuracy, which is fair. Here's something I just noticed. Um, here are the billboards in Knight Rider. I'd even recognize these except S Ray. Um, and here's the text that accompanies these if you want to pause the video. So that's it for this installment of Dablex Overflow. Um, just some quick updates, I have unlisted the second episode of Dablex Overflow and I'm going to be remastering it with extra facts. I'm not sure when that will come, that might come next week, that might come in six months time. Also, on my second channel, Missing Pixel Extra, which is linked below, I have uploaded the music from most of the London Racer games, which you guys can check out. They are in the highest quality that I could find, they're all in playlists too. So yeah, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.